Welcome to another super awesome video in my Intro to HTML web video series. In the last video, we covered the, the topic of making a basic two column layout using floats and divs. And this is what it ended up looking like. We've got a left column which we called main content and a right column which we called sidebar. We had a nav with some links. We had a header with an H1. We had a footer with some small text that said copyright. In the main content, I had two articles, each article containing an H2, a figure with an image, and a figure caption, and two paragraphs. In the right, I've got pretty much the same thing. So now what do we do with this? How do we style it? How do we make it look good? One of the things we're going to run into with this is uh, we're going to run into some problems with um, having all things fit together with these floats, because they, they behave kind of weird. And I'll show you what I'm talking about in just a second. So let's style this thing. First thing that we want to do when we style it is we want to start thinking about the white space in the document. Right now, as you can see, I've got absolutely no white space, really. I've got um, content touching the edge of boxes. I've got all kinds of problems. Um, so I want, to, I want to alleviate those problems. I want to take care of those. First thing that I want to do is what we would normally do at the very beginning of just about any web page. Do our universal selector and take out all margins and padding. We've been talking about this one for a while. It looks like this. Margin, zero, padding, zero. And as you may recall, what this is going to do, the star or the asterisk, selects all HTML elements in the document. Margin zero and padding zero sets the margin and padding for all elements in the document to zero. So this is going to tighten things up a little bit. And yeah, I know it looks a little bit strange right now. We're going to take care of those problems in a little bit. The reason that we do this, once again, is so that this will look the same in Explorer, in Firefox, in Chrome, in Opera, in Safari, and uh, take out any of the browser's built-in defaults for margins and padding. We want to control the margins and padding ourselves. So let's start giving it some white space. I want to start out by adding some white space into these columns, getting a little bit of a gap in between the text and the main content and the text in the sidebar. This is just gross having them touching each other. It's really gross having them touching the edge of the boxes. It just creeps me out a little bit. So let's take care of that. So we've got our style rules for main content and sidebar here. In order to create a little bit of space there, we can add some padding in each. Padding. I'm going to start at 2%. I'll copy this, and I'll add it into sidebar as well. Save it. Refresh it in the browser. And oh no, we've got a broken web page. Didn't see that coming, did you? I did. What happened is the padding actually made the container bigger. It put padding on the left and padding on the right and made it 4% wider. So now my main content, instead of being 70% wide, is actually 74% wide. And my sidebar, instead of being 30% wide, is actually 34% wide. That adds up to a total of 108%. So between these two columns, I've got a width of 108%. That's too wide for the 100% width of our body. And if you've got floats and they're too wide to fit in the same area in, in the browser uh, at one time, they will force one element down. It'll force the second element down to the next line. So if they don't fit, things get bumped. We don't want that to happen. We need to make sure they fit. So the general rule of thumb is padding and margins are figured in to the overall width of a box. Got that? So the 2% padding here and 2% padding here are figured into the overall width of my main content. Like I said before, my width was 70%, but the 2% padding here and 2% padding here made the overall box 74% wide. So I need to compensate. I need to take 4% out of the width of the box and 4% out of the width of that box. 
So if I take 4% out of the width here, 66%. 4% out here, 26%. Save it, and things should sit nicely next to each other. Okay, that's good. They sit nicely in the same line. One of the things I don't like about this is this white space here is, is way too big. It's actually double the amount of white space that we have here. So I can take care of that in one of two ways. I can either subtract the padding from the left side of my main content or I could use margins. I'm going to make it easy by subtracting the 2% on the left side of my sidebar. So instead of having 2% here, I'm going to go 2% top, 2% right, 2% bottom, and 0 left. Remember, this is the shorthand notation for padding. We can do the top, right, bottom, and left all on one line. This is quicker and easier than going padding left, zero, padding right, two percent, padding top, two percent, wow, this is getting to be cumbersome and annoying, and padding bottom, two percent. So this is a long roundabout way of doing it. This is the longhand notation which you've seen from a previous video. This is the shorthand notation. This is a quicker and easier way of doing it. Just remember any box um, has four sides. It's got a top, a right, a bottom, and a left. And you can enter those values in on that same line in that same declaration clockwise. So top, right, bottom, left instead of doing it this really slow way. So anytime you can make things quicker and easier on yourself, do it. So I took out that extra padding on the left side. Let's see how it looks. It tightened it up just a little bit. It gave us the same gutter here that we have over here, which is kind of nice. I like that. Now, let's start to add some padding and, and margins in other places. I'm going to add some padding in the header. I'm going to add some margins around my paragraphs and around my H2s and so on and so forth. So header is going to get some padding. Set it to 2% or whatever you choose. Look at it, see if it looks good. That looks pretty good. My paragraphs I'm going to set the margins to 2%. Let's see how that looks. That should, yep, that pushes paragraphs away from each other nicely, and I've got a little bit of space. That looks good. I think my figures look pretty good. Now my nav needs to be taken care of. So what I want to do is make these links horizontal. If you may, you may recall how to do this. In order to select them, we need to select UL, LI, all LIs that exist within ULs that exist within the nav. And set the display to inline. Okay. Save it. Refresh it and now the links are horizontal but I don't like that they're all the way over at the edge I want to get them even I want to have them have the same gutter as everything else so I'm going to give the nav a little bit of padding I'm going to start at 2 percent on the left I'm going to start at 1% on the top, 2% on the right, 1% on the bottom, and 2% on the left. The reason I do this is I like them to have a little bit of a narrower padding on the top and bottom, 
and a little bit more padding on the left and right. There we go, it moved it over just a little bit, gave us a little more space there. Now these links are really close together, so I need to give them just a little bit of space. And I can do that with margins. I'm going to select these list items, and I'm going to set the margins on the, the right side of each of these list items to 2%. Let's see how that looks. So it'll push everything over from the from the leftmost one and push it over to the right side. It gave us just a little bit of space. All right, so our white space now looks pretty nice on this page. This is a good looking page to start with. Oh, I didn't put any padding in the footer. So I'll just do that really quickly. Do the same thing that I've got in the header. Save it. Refresh it. Now I've got a little bit of padding down there. Now my web page is looking kind of nice. Things that you might notice that are missing. Colors. Interesting font choice. More images maybe in the backgrounds of things. Um, there are all sorts of stuff we can do with this. And we'll work on that in the next few videos. So this video as review, we just adjusted the white space on all of our uh, on our whole document and all of our containers and gave a little bit of space in between the edges of things, in between different elements, making things spaced out nicely.